What's up guys, Nicholas from Plugged Into Gaming, and welcome to my Wii U collection video. And, uh, yeah, so it's 2014, and that means that the Wii U is now officially about a year and a month old. Um, and that's about how long I've had the Wii U. I'm, I'm a, pretty much, I've stayed with the Wii U since its launch. And, uh, yeah, so, because I've had it for a year and a, a year and a little bit more than that, um, I've compiled a lot of different Wii U games, um, for the console, and, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I feel like the Wii U hasn't been getting enough attention, um, well, enough positive attention, um, the, the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 just came out, and, uh, yeah, a lot of people are like, well, the Wii U is not gonna do well, it's, it's not as graphically powerful, it doesn't have as good, ga as many good games, um, and I don't agree with that. I think the Wii U has a lot of good Nintendo games. I think it has um, more first-party stuff, which is what makes it a good console. And the idea is good. I don't think the second screen is very gimmicky. Well, in some games, it, it's not used the best. Um, it is a good idea, and I think it just hasn't been put to its full potential yet. So, needless to say, I have 18, I think, Wii U games here. And I am going to show you each one of them. Alright, so our first game here is uh, a game I unboxed on this channel. I've unboxed a, a several of these, but this is one of the ones that I know I unboxed. Um, Batman Arkham City Armored Edition. Alright, so I am at the end of this game now, and uh, not 100 percenting it, but the story, and I love this game. I've never previously played a Batman Arkham game before. Uh, prior to this, and I still haven't played any other ones. However, this one is so good. Um, the story is incredible. All of the collectibles and powers that uh, Batman has are really good. Um, while the tacked on um, BAT mode for the Armored Edition section of the title, um, while that's not always the most helpful thing, it is a good feature. And uh, the gamepad is actually used really well in the game. Um, there's a map on the gamepad and then there's a lot of uh, little like sub screens that you can go in uh, there's like biographies there's um, everything that you'd have to pause the game for previously you don't have to so it, it is very helpful um, I picked this game up for 15 bucks so if you could find it for that it's definitely worth it especially if you haven't played Arkham City before um, it includes all the DLC previously uh, previously released for this game including all the Catwoman and the Harley Quinn's Revenge so there is a lot of content that you can um, that you can uh, play in this one. So uh, yeah, I would definitely check it out if you're an action fan, if you're a superheroes fan, or if you haven't played Arkham City yet. Um, yeah, just give it a try. Uh, the next game is not the most uh, highly rated title for the Wii U. This is Game and Wario. Um, I got this at lunch as well, and um, yeah. I I don't know, it, it's a, it's it's all right title, and I feel this gets a lot of um, this gets a lot of criticism because there are not a lot of good games, but there are good games in the same time. It's kind of hard to explain. So let, so let's start. Um, there are sixteen different individual mini games similar to Nintendo Land, which I'll get to later, um, and they all are supposed to show off the gamepad in, a, in an interesting new way, and. Um, yeah, half of them are not good, and those are mostly the single-player ones. There are single-player minigames, and then there are multiplayer ones. Uh, so, some half of the single-player ones are not good. They're just, they're boring, and I didn't play them after one or two times that I had to. Um, but then there are the multiplayer ones, and then there are a select few, I say one or two single-player ones, that are just worth it, and it's so good. Um, there's one of them called Fruit where one person on the gamepad is a thief, but he's hiding among about 200 different other individuals that look similar. So the people looking on the TV have to um, watch the TV to see which one is stealing all the fruit, which is really fun. It's, it's a fun little game. Um, this one actually doesn't even use Wii remotes, so if you're looking for a game that doesn't need Wii remotes, but you need uh, you need a multiplayer game, this is definitely one. Um, yeah, there aren't. There isn't a lot for multiplayer. There's only four little different games, and maybe one or two other ones that you can try to best your friend's scores with. But other than that, um, yeah, it's a good little package. But I wouldn't suggest paying more than twenty dollars for it. 
Um, I paid about 35 at launch. I don't think that was worth it, unfortunately, but um, it is a good game, and it's a good it's good for a collection. Um, then we got one of my most anticipated games of the year. We got Legend of Zelda: The Wind Waker HD. <laughs> it's shining all over the camera right now. Um, yeah, I am a huge Zelda fan. Um, I haven't been I haven't liked Zelda for that long. Not because I hated it to be to before, but because I never was interested in it. I never I never really knew what it was about. Um, so I played a lot of the Zelda games recently, and I never got to Wind Waker, uh, and I never really thought of buying it for the GameCube, I just, like, I'm not really interested. Um, but then they came out with the HD re-release, or they, at least they announced it, and I said, wow, this is really, really cool. Um, I'm gonna have to go and get this, so I got it on the release day, and I absolutely adore this game. The story's really good, the graphics look incredible with the HD remake. Um, there are a lot of good little gameplay tweaks, and while I haven't played the original, I do um, I do see where where those gameplay tweaks would have really helped. Um, there's one thing called the Swift Sail, and it allows you to sail to any place without having to change the wind direction. But I didn't actually get it for a while because for some reason the um, uh, voice crack the Swift Sail wouldn't show up uh, in the area it's supposed to. So I had to go, I think, the first one, uh, one or two dungeons without actually using the Swift Sail. And it was a little bit on the tedious side, so the Swift Sail really helped. Um, there's also a lot of gamepad uh, functionality things. It's not, like, overdose, but it's pretty good. Um, there's, like, the item subscreen, similar to, like, a DS Zelda. There's the item subscreens, there's the map. It's actually really helpful, and it's really cool. Uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. If you've never played played Wind Waker, get it. If you <laughs> definitely, that's a that's a console uh, that's a console making thing. Um, and if you if you have played Wind Waker or if you're looking to get into Zelda, I would definitely uh, suggest picking it up. It's a good it's a good title just to look look at in your collection. Like, hey, this is really cool. Um, next one is one that I'm not sure many people know about because then. I don't know if many people are interested in this, but it looks it's a good game and it's better than you probably think it is. This is Lego City Undercover. Um, I know a lot of people who have a Wii U who don't own this game, and the main reason is because obviously it's Legos and like mm, I'm not a huge fan of Legos. Want to know? Want to know something? This is one of the best games on the console, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, Lego City Undercover is a Wii U exclusive. It only is on the Wii U, and that's mostly because of the gimmicks that it uses with the gamepad that really couldn't be done on anywhere else. Um, Lego City Undercover has an excellent crime cop story. Um, for a Lego game, it's it's really good. And um, the, there's a huge open world to explore. There's a lot of collectibles. Um, the gamepad is actually used really nicely. While I would have liked the off-TV play, where you can only play in your gamepad, um, it still provides a lot of cool gameplay. There's there's a huge map on your gamepad at almost all times, and there's like voice chat, there's camera functionality, there's Miiverse functionality. So I believe there's Miiverse functionality. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the gamepad's used in a lot of good ways. It's an interesting action game, and I bet you can find this for a pretty good price now. Um, I got this at launch, so I can't really say that. But um, yeah, it's a great Lego game. Um, it's a good game overall, and it, I think it's definitely worth whatever you pay for it. Um, definitely give this one a try. There's a lot of these games on the Wii U that you kind of have to give a little bit of a try to, um, but once you give them a try, you, you might really enjoy them. This next one is also a LEGO game. This is LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. I recently got this um, for the holidays, and uh, yeah, so far I'm really enjoying it. There's a lot of different heroes to use, and... Uh, the story's a little bit on the ridiculous side. It's all the villains come together and they're trying to make a Doom Ray, and uh, all the su superheroes are coming together and they're going to try to stop them. It's really, really, really basic. Um, similar to the DC superheroes, but a little bit less in depth. But it's good. It's a it's a good little game. Um, there's a lot to do, similar to um, Lego City Undercover. There's a lot of different side things to do. Um, there you have an open world of New York City. And, uh, yeah, there seems like there's a lot of side missions, a lot of different little, um, 
ridiculous little jokes and Easter eggs hidden there. Like uh, one of the things is you have to save a ton of Stan Lees, which is kind of which is kind of a good nod to Mar Marvel fans. Yeah, it's a good title. Um, I wouldn't suggest it for everybody though, because um, it gets a lot uh, a lot cheesier as you keep going on. So. If you're a Marvel fan, get it. If you are um, a Lego fan, get it. Otherwise, I would try to stay with other games because there are probably better games that you would like. Um, I am not the diehard fans like some people are, but I've liked it so far. This is Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Um, I'm not a huge Monster Hunter fan. I, re I like some of these other games. I've recently got these. Um, and yeah, so far I'm liking it. It's very RPG heavy more than it is action heavy, and some people might be discouraged by that. They might just say, "Oh, I want monster. Um, I want to hunt monsters more than I want to look through subscreens or whatever." But um, there's, it's a very in-depth game, and it's very. It has a lot of things to do. Um, there's a lot of different um, ways you can build your monster hunter up from like um, from just a less armored individual to a real powerhouse with tons of really awesome weapons. Um, I've only put in about an hour and a half to this game, but I feel like I can put in about a hundred more. And uh, that's that's what I like in a game, that it feels like there's a ton of content here. Um, yeah, so the monsters are pretty good so far. Um, it's not such a huge world that it feels overwhelming, which I like. Um, so yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool little game. Um, I I actually got it for about twenty bucks. So if you can find it for about that, that's that's a good price for it. I think um, this is another one I took a pretty big risk risk on. Uh, this is Mo Need for Speed Most Wanted. You. I am not a car person. I'm not a racing game person, or at least a real life racing simulator. So this was a little bit on a different uh, purchase. Like I, I wasn't really interested in this. Um, However, I did purchase it, and then when I got it, I really enjoyed it. Um, the races are really awesome. They're well-crafted, actually. The world is pretty beautiful. There's a lot of small details that you can that you notice that's incredible. They're just really, really cool little things. Um, the cars are very realistic, and they're I like this lineup of cars that they have. Um, the, what the Wii U brings to this, if you if you want to get this version instead of the other versions on other consoles, which are probably cheaper. Um, this one introduces a like a co-op mode kind of thing, so someone can hold the gamepad and help you out or screw you up. There's a uh, on and off traffic button. There's a day and night button, so you can switch the the uh, time of day from a day to a night. Um, you could turn off the cops if they're trying to chase you. Because um, that's a big thing on here. You, the cops are going to try to find you, and if you can outrun them, then uh, you get some more experience points. And then you can uh, customize your car, I think, on there and quickly change cars. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty good game. Um, I haven't really gotten too much into this. While I have played a significant portion of it, there's still a ton more I have to do, which is awesome. Um, I'm really looking forward to completing uh, most of this game. <laughs> Then this, these next two will kind of go together. Uh, these were, I got, well, the first one I got at launch of the console, I got New Super Mario Bros. U here. This is the fourth New Super Mario Bros. game. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Um, obviously, the New Super Mario Bros. series, especially num the New Super Mario Bros. 2 and New Super Mario Bros. U, have been getting a lot of slack for not being really new. Um mostly just being another 2D Mario, but it's really not another 2D Mario. It, it reintroduces and introduces a lot of different things. It gives you a, an open world setup for the world map. It reintroduces the baby Yoshis, um, and it has the super acorn power-up, um, which is really nice. It's a really fun power-up to use, and I th definitely think it helps. It's like the Tanuki Tail, kind of, but a little bit on the different side. Um, yeah, so it's a good game. It's a good 2D Mario game. It's good with multiplayer. I believe this one's the better one with multiplayer. Um, and yeah, levels are really well done. I think the levels are done, well done. And a lot of people are saying this is an easy game. I wouldn't say it's easy just to say that there's a lack of... Um, there's a lack of enemies at certain points, so it feels like it's way too easy. 
Uh, like it's just, oh, well you have to uh, spin this gear and then try to jump up as fast as you can, but if you can do it in one try, then obviously it's easy. So, yeah, New Super Mario Bros. U. And then, just try to stand that up. Then we have New Super Luigi U, which is the extension that was released uh, back in August. Um, it's an awesome green case. If you're a collector, you're going to really want this case. Um, it actually reminds me of some of the Xbox 360 cases. It's in that same color, just not translucent. Um, New Super Luigi U is very similar to New Super Mario Bros. U, but it's a little bit different in the sense uh, of the level design and how Luigi controls. Luigi can jump about a lot higher. Um, he has his flutter jump, and also he skids to a stop, so he, t he doesn't stop right away um, when you're running. Also, Nabbit's a reintroduced character for a playable character. Um, he is invincible, so he can't get hit, but he um, can die in holes, pits, and lava, but otherwise he can just run by enemies and fire and all that stuff. So it's a good entry-level character, many people are saying, and I agree with that. Um, this was put out for the Year of Luigi, which is apparently still going on for the 2014, because Nintendo still has things for Luigi, which I like, which is interesting. Um, levels are actually only 100 seconds long, so they're pretty short, they're little bite-sized levels, um, and they're actually really difficult. So, uh, if you're looking for a more challenging Mario experience and you haven't gotten New Super Mario Bros. U yet, um, and you're saying, oh, you know what, I don't even want this, uh, let's try to find something more challenging, get New Super Luigi U, it's definitely worth, um, it's definitely worth getting, especially if you can get the retail version for only about 25, 30 bucks. Um, also, this one is not good multiplayer. This one, the New Super Mario Bros. U is, is, but New Super Luigi U really isn't. It's not a multiplayer game. It, because the levels are so fast, you feel like you always have to run and the, everybody just gets in the way. It's just, it's a little bit annoying. Um, so New Super Luigi U and New Super Mario Bros. U, both pretty much console, um, console necessities, but if you're looking for uh, just a nice little new platformer, get those. Um, I can't imagine that you could find them for uh, a bad price. Um, and the new Wii U consoles are actually being sold with them now, so I would definitely suggest uh, getting, uh, if you don't have a Wii U, get, the, get that bundle, because then you get it right with it, and it's pretty good. Um, this one actually came with, speaking of bundles, this one came out with my Wii U, uh, this is Nintendo Land, and I feel like this is probably better than Wii Sports ever was with the uh, trying to show off what your console can do. There are 12 different mini games, similar to Game of Wario, but a lot better. Um, each one of the mini games is based off one of Nintendo's franchises, it, even if it's not the most uh, recognized franchise. Um, so obviously you got the, the your own uh, Mario, you got your Zelda, you got Metroid, Pikmin, uh, there's a Donkey Kong one, there's a Luigi one, there's a Yoshi one, then um, there are a couple of other ones, um, but they're all really good, they're all really fun. The multiplayer ones are, again, the best ones, however, the single player ones aren't bad, they're really, really not bad, and uh, I, f I feel like the uh, single player ones are really strong, the single player ones are more like an arcade-esque ones, where you have to go as, as long as you can until uh, until you die, and then that's your score, that you, like you, you have a set score. Um, with the multiplayer ones, it's mostly just competitive, uh, mostly the competitive ones are the better ones. Um, you got the Mario Chase, you got Luigi's Ghost Mansion, and you got Animal Crossing New Leaf, which mostly uh, enti entitles the gamepad player versus everybody else, and it's really, really fun game. Um, if you didn't get this with your console, get it. It's not a bad purchase, especially if you can get it new. I think you now you can get it for 20 bucks new, which is incredible. Um, and if you didn't own a Wii for some reason, um, now apparently they're selling this game with a Luigi remote, which is really, really cool. So um, if you're looking to just get started on the Wii U, definitely get this game. Um, and if you're looking to uh, get another remote with it, try the Luigi Bundle. Um, probably one of the most anticipated games for any Wii U owner. Um, I'm not actually... I wasn't too excited when this game came out. Like, I wasn't... I wasn't dying. I didn't go to a mid midnight release of it. But, um... I was interested in it. 
Uh, that's why I got it. I got Pikmin 3 here. I never played Pikmin 2, so that might do be a little bit of a reason why I didn't uh, wasn't too excited for it. But Pikmin 1 I did play, and it was really good. Um, so I picked up Pikmin 3. And Pikmin 3 is a really good game. It's uh, a strategy puzzle action game. It's pretty much all of those. Um, you control an army of up to 100 of those little creatures. And uh, yeah, there's actually... At the surface, it doesn't seem like there's a lot new, especially if you've seen other Pikmin games. But there is a lot new here. First of all, the game looks incredible. And the soundtrack is really good. Second of all, there are two new t types of Pikmin um, that are actually useful in this one. Um, there's the Rock Pikmin, and there's the Flying Pikmin, and they're pretty much self-explanatory. The Rock ones are harder ones, they can break more things, and the Flying ones can fly, they can fly over obstacles. Um, there are three captains in this time, so there are three different characters that you have to kind of juggle, and if you want to get the most out of each day cycle, then you, will use, you have to use your gamepad, and you have to use everything that you need to uh, to get all the fruit and to complete the story. And speaking of the story, um, the story's kind of short. And not that the game's easy short, but it's a short game. So if you're looking to get the most out of it, you really have to try to um, explore everything and all that stuff. So the story, the main story is very short, but there's a lot to do at the same time. It's kind of weird. Yeah, and then the challenge mode of this game is really good, too. There's a challenge mode and uh, bingo battle mode. But the challenge mode is really cool. And uh, I've probably put more hours in the challenge mode than I have the actual main story just because uh, the challenge mode has so many things and you have to try to beat your score constantly. Uh, it's really good and you try to speed run the whole thing. It really helps you in your Pikmin tactics. It's, it's a nice little addition to the game. Um, so if you're one of those type of people, I would definitely suggest getting that. Um, this is one of my most anticipated games of at least the holiday season. While it didn't come out during the holiday season, I was really looking forward to it. This is Rayman Legends. Uh, Rayman Legends is a 2D platformer. It's the sequel to Rayman Origins, which came out on every console ever, um, including the 3DS, uh and the handhelds. Uh, Rayman Origins was a great game, and um, I felt like the level design in that was really good, although it kind of felt like it didn't reach its full potential to me. I don't know why, but it just it didn't feel like it, it was everything it was supposed to be. Rayman Legends, on the other hand, feels like it was perfect. It feels like it was exactly what it was supposed to be. Uh, the art style is great in this one. The soundtrack is incredible. Uh, there's a lot of cool things to do in this one and um, yeah the levels are incredible there's musical levels even um, which are really fun and uh, yeah there's really not much to say especially about these platformers they're, they're all not that they're all the same but there's platformers are platformers you jump and try to avoid obstacles but uh, yeah Rayman Legends is one of the best platformers on the Wii U right now and um, yeah it was originally a Wii U exclusive um, so there are a couple things on the Wii U that you'd feel on other versions of the game or like, hmm, why did they put that in there? But, um, yeah, this is the definitive version, the Wii U version. So if you're looking for a version to get and you have other consoles, get the Wii U version. It's worth it. The next two games I'm going to put together just for to save a little bit of time because they're very, very similar. Uh, here we got... Scribblenauts Unlimited and Scribblenauts Unmasked. I got Unlimited at launch. Scribblenauts Unmasked I only got a couple days ago. Um, Scribblenauts Unlimited and Unmasked both have the same idea. You write words on this main character Maxwell's notepad and you have to try to solve problems. It's really, that's basically the whole game. Um, it, both of these introduced an open world kind of mechanic. Uh, where you can travel between certain things instead of in a, a very tight uh, linear level based structure it's that it was not good uh, in the previous two entries um, so this these games are really really good they're they're excellent uh, and there are actually some pretty funny puzzles and uh, some uh, some pretty good throwbacks to certain things uh, scribble knots unmasked 
has superheroes, obviously, that's the one difference between the two, and I think that really makes the game. Um, so if you're a superhero fan, get this version, um, but if you're not really such a super DC superhero fan, and you're like, mm, maybe I just want to try it, get this version, and I think it's on, I think it's on the 3DS too, but I would suggest getting the Wii U version, um, so yeah. Um, this next game is probably one of the biggest games on the console, just because, uh, this is Super Mario 3D World, uh, I got this one at launch as well, it is a 3D platformer, and there's really not much to say, um, it's Mario, it's, it's a new Mario game, it is the 3D Mario game for the console, um, I don't know if Nintendo's gonna make a second 3D Mario game, um, like a Galaxy 3 or Sunshine 2, whatever these fans want, um, yeah, but it's really good. I've, I haven't beaten it yet, but I've gotten pretty far into it, and uh, the level design is excellent. There's a lot of cool new power-ups, such as the double cherry and the cat suit, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, you could play as Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad. Uh, <laughs> dang, and I'm voice cracking. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a cool little thing. It's, it's kind of like 3D land, where there's a mix between... Um, the 2D style and the 3D style, so it's really good. Um, it's a good game. It, it's obviously a, just a system seller. So if you're if you're gonna get a Wii U or you have a Wii U and you don't have this game, what are you doing? Uh, and then the final game I have is the Wonderful 101. Um, again, not really much to be said about this one, um, just because you kind of have to see it in order to believe what it is. Um, so the Wonderful 101 is a action-heavy game. Um, you, it's similar to Pikmin, um, but more like a Bayonetta because it's made by the same people with Bay Bayonetta. Um, you control about a hundred people, and you just have to create these little morph uh, things, and you you have to uh, use these morphs to defeat huge enemies and uh, bosses and stuff like that. It's really fun. It's really e it's really epic at points, and everything exploding. It's really awesome. Um, so if you're looking for an awesome action-heavy experience, um, just something that you you really you really need that rush of adren rush of adrenaline, um, the wonderful 101 is what you need. Um, it's a good little game. I recently got this one too, so I haven't really gotten that far in it. But it seems like the story's a little bit on the cheesy side. But oh well. So that is my complete list of my Wii U collection. Um, I'm kind of running out of time on my camera here, so. That's why I'm kind of rushing it at the end. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so I've been Nicholas from Plugged Into the Gaming. If you want to see more content, definitely go check me out uh, and my channel out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching my Wii U collection. Please make sure to subscribe, rate, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time.